Before we begin, I'd like to welcome everybody to our 4 p.m. Mass, and also to those that are in the parking lot who are listening to it. And of course, all those that are online who will be watching this. Welcome. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we acknowledge our sins, so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, has Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes, 
and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we pass. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her, her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence to Christ and to the church. The word of the Lord. disciples who were listening to said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It, it is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you 
who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the ones who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Last week we celebrated the Blessed Virgin Mary's Assumption into Heaven. And if we wouldn't have uh, celebrated that, we would have had another Eucharistic discourse. And so we kind of missed that gospel. But as a result from missing it, then we kind of continue with this week as the result of the things that Jesus has been saying about the bread of life. And the reaction you just heard in this gospel which took place. But just to re summarize it quickly, Jesus, you know, fed the, the 5,000, over 5,000. Their bellies were full, they were happy and content. They wanted to make Jesus king. And he said, you know, I'm the bread of life. And then after that, he said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. And they began to murmur. And Jesus continued to say, I am that bread of life come down from heaven. And he added, this bread is my flesh. And that made them all think twice about what he was talking about. And of course, they doubted now. And last week, if we would have heard the, the gospel, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life within you. Really striking home, you know, this value of what he was trying to convey for the future. And, but they wouldn't, they didn't want to accept it. They, it was too tough for them to accept. What, is he crazy? Eat his body, drink his blood, no way. So the crowds and his disciples left him. And Jesus says to the apostles, you wanna leave me too? And of course the apostles say, well, where are we going to go? We believed in you, and we believe that you are that light, that Son of God. And so they stuck it out with Jesus. They had that faith. It really had imprinted in, in their hearts. And so they would continue to follow Jesus. You know, I think in every age when this is preached, the body and blood, soul and divinity in our Eucharist is, is preached on a regular basis. People who hear it for the first time and they think, you know, those will come, they'll, it's like this, they're vacillating back and forth. What? Do I believe it or not? Is it true or not? And they go back to the Last Supper in which Jesus, you know, instituted it. And those who will believe they will believe, and those who don't, they will leave and want nothing to do with what we practice. This living God that comes down into our Eucharist and supplies every grace for us in this journey and helps our faith daily so that we confront, can confront all the things that we confront. 
You know, the, the, the first two readings seem to be out of sync. Talking about marriage and connecting it to the Eucharist. Well, I think what the, the people who turned or brought this connection was talking about the importance of how marriage is between a man and a woman and how strong that bond is and should be always. And I, when you think of that, the mystery in which Jesus was incorporating the Eucharist was about this mystery and uh, us involved in this mystery of being in union with God and the importance of this faith to take place so that we continue. There is a great value, of course, as we all know, in the Eucharist of Jesus. So many Eucharistic miracles have taken place, you know, and, and they're, they usually happen when the faith begins to be sluggish or there's doubts and then all of a sudden, the Eucharistic Jesus, all of a sudden, Jesus' image is planted on the Eucharistic host. And by only a miracle by God. And it's for the faithful to see this and to believe this. Now those of us who have this wonderful faith understand that it truly is. And you know, that's it. that says a lot for our faith. That we are committed. And that faith remains strong until the end of our life. But I think many times, brothers and sisters, the grace of God brings this wonderful peace that you can't find anywhere else but in the Eucharistic Jesus. So, you know, we know about those who are stubborn and hard of heart, and they turn away, but you can't control them. We have to pray for them and ask the Lord God to give them the grace to see the truth. Read the scriptures, read the Last Supper, because that's one of the last things that Jesus did in order for us to feel not abandoned, but to be in union with him on this regular basis in a spiritual way which conveys so much grace. There is no substitute out there. If you all left, you'd be looking for something else, and you're not going to find what you find here. Lots of detours out there, lots of dead ends out there. And then you'll say to yourself, why am I out there for? I need to come back. Because this is where the Lord is, alive, in person, and in our hearts. So I think, you know, the, the, the reason why these marriage, uh, the first reading and the second reading, are to convey this, this loyalty, you know, this keeping together on a regular basis. You know, COVID-19 tried to push, repel, and stop people from coming to receive God in church. Yet the faithful have come back, and they realize that there is nothing out there to separate them from the promises of eternal life. You know, the world is constantly growing and going through tribulations. We know this, of some kind of suffering. The earthquake in Haiti, the withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan, the floods and the fires in our own nation. Sometimes they put fear and worry in the people's hearts. Dump your fears and worries in the Lord's lap. When we come to Holy Communion, communion, dump them there and say, Lord, we know you're God. Bring me the grace to persevere through all the bad news that we have to go through. And then we have to put on our masks again. And nobody's happy with that. It's like, Lord, give me some more patience so I can persevere through this. But you know, it's this perseverance that we all have with our faith. And, you know, therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. 
to the very end of our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the vicar of Christ on earth, that their harmony, that their harmony between the chief pastor and his people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For separated spouses, that through Jesus may rediscover forgiveness and reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Afghanistan, for their safety during this time of transition, and for the safe passage of American citizens returning home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion, euthanasia, terrorism, and all acts that harm the dignity of the human person, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, especially from within our archdiocese, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in our daily prayers, that God's healing touch may bring them peace and comfort especially for Richard Martinez and his brother Danny Martinez. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the souls of the faithful departed, especially for Richard C. Levaca and Isabel Grace Baxter, and also for Fabian Ortega. For these and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's Holy Mass intentions are for a birthday blessing for Pat Kershaw and for the repose of the souls of Joseph W. Duran and Vincent Zarella. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father of mercies, hear our prayers and petitions. We ask them in faith, and we ask them through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, who through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest to you therefore most merciful father we make humble prayer and petition through jesus christ your son our lord that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Archbishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those who have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, 
and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us. This pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are watching online, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have three announcements. Registration for religious education, confirmation, and life team is still open for the coming school year. You can register online on our website, incarnation.church. Classes start next week. We are still in need of teachers and assistants for all grades. If you are interested in volunteering, please contact the parish office. All high school teens, please join us next Sunday at Light Team for our Office Olympics Fall kickoff at 5 p.m. in the Parish Hall. If you have not yet registered, you can do so on our website, incarnation.church. The Knights of Columbus will conduct an official U.S. Flag Retirement Ceremony on Saturday, September the 11th in the prayer garden from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please drop off your old, worn, damaged American flags at the church by Wednesday, September the 8th. Flags will be disposed of properly and honorably. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Master's ending, go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.